DD214 Gaming Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Gaming is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. It's your saviors. We made it. We made it, everybody. Welcome to church. And if we're for the ones saving you, boy, boy, are you in trouble. <laughs> Shit. How's How you guys, how you guys doing? doing, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm, I'm kind of like thinking like, because we went over the show right before the show. And I'm thinking like, I could have sworn I did more than that. But I don't remember. <laughs> This week has been kind of a kind of a blur. Not mm-hmm. gonna lie, especially uh, for those of us in the uh, <clears throat> major metropolitan area of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Freaking, how about them Chiefs, huh? Huh? How about them Chiefs? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> how about I mean, them it was it was gonna happen. It, I was I was confident last I was confident last week uh, when we were when we were talking uh, uh, before before the game and uh, I'll tell you what boy they, they wanted to get they wanted to make sure everybody had a heart attack didn't they didn't they freaking holy crap dude what a game freaking you I think like Joe we, like what we talked about almost happened but then the the Eagles were just a damn good team dude like they didn't they didn't fold they didn't fold they kept coming mm-hmm. and it and like it it, it was. It turned into a dog fight. It it really did. Like, so yeah, freaking. How, so what uh, what, hap- what happened? What like, happened at the end that everybody was talking about? Um, the hold, hold, the hold. Yeah. So what? So basically, up until that point in the game, and we, you know, we're, and we've talked about it on this show. The, the 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 refereeing this year in the NFL, this like all season, not just the playoffs. Here, we're talking like the whole season. Mm-hmm. Re- refereeing has been atrocious across the board, like absolutely atrocious up until that point in the game. So we're talking, there's only a a couple minutes left on the clock. Chiefs are driving. There hadn't really been any, what you might say, like bad calls. The call the ref made right there was not a bad call. Like everybody, you can see it on the film. The player that, that did the hold admitted that he held the guy. You know what I mean? They just, the refs weren't necessarily calling it a lot earlier in the game so i'm sure many I'm, I'm sure many others would disagree but you know that's football banter for you well and the, they can disagree all they want i mean the player admitted it was a, it was a penalty and he got and he got caught like straight up he got caught and that's like and when when the eagles the player from the eagles says that like 
I mean, Philadelphia fans or anybody who hates the Chiefs, they can freaking say whatever they want. Like that's that's the that's the only response is like, guess what? Like before we got b- caught. before like, before we what, what up, Drew Davis? Before we get to all the positivity of all that happened from the Super Bowl, uh-huh. did you see what happened over here, like on the East Coast when they lost in Philly? Yeah, a little a little bit. Why don't you? Why don't you? What? what? <laughs> Typical Philly shit. That's what happened. So I think I'm about. I think I'm about to shift the hate from Boston to Philly. Not be not because um, me and my wife are planning to go over there for a few days, but you know because <laughs> you know we're we're you know that. What the fuck are you doing, Philadelphia? What are you doing? They, they would have rioted if they won, dude. It, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It's Philadelphia. Dude, dude. Like, they. I on. saw yeah. the one. All I needed to see was one video. One video, and there was, was a the, video of them flipping the SUV over, and okay. they started stomping on the fucking thing. And there was someone inside the car, and and I could, I'm like, what is going on here? I saw a video of a For real Gonzo. He looked, he looked younger, but it, this kid must. Yeah. This kid, he looked like a, in his early twenties, and this kid must have had a lot of money in the game. And he literally, like, he was at a, he was at a Super Bowl party, and he smashed the. I TV know, I know exactly what you like. He's. And he was like getting everybody's face in the party because they were like, what he raged. The fuck are you doing? He raged. It was the game wasn't even over at that point. There was it was like that was just at the towards the end when the Chiefs made that last field goal. I, there was still time on the clock. And like that, I completely like, yeah. forgot <laughs> about that video. I completely <laughs> forgot about that video. Stay classy, Phil. Stay classy. I showed that dude. I showed that video to my wife, and she was like, she was like, "Is this real?" I'm like, "The guy lost a lot of money in the game. It's it's over for him." <laughs> But see, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, Philly Drew, in general. Like, yeah, Drew and Drew Davis just said, even if the Chiefs win, you still lose because you got Jackson Mahomes, right? Yeah, ha, uh-huh. ha, uh-huh, Drew Davis. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's. I mean, the thing is, that's just Philly, though. Like, win or lose, Eagles fans are some hey, of the right. most obnoxious fucking football fans on the planet. Yeah, all the yeah. ones we all the ones we had here in KC were very uh, cordial, very very nice, very friendly. You know what I mean? I didn't didn't well, see. That's because they weren't home. They weren't home, probably. They weren't just, home. <laughs> see, what I was going to say was that they don't want to get arrested out of their own place. But you know, that's just, you know. Hey, when you when you know when you know where your where your personal lockup is, you know what I mean? Like you got to just stay close to it because you know you're going again, right? So you just got to know, like, you know, you take take all the stuff out of your pockets, you know, and give it to your old lady before before the before the cops put the bracelets on you, know, so you'll have it when you get out and. Yeah, you know, because you know the score. You've been there before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Philly fans. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, oh what's, what do we see? What's he got here? He's yeah, talking Jackson about so, and Brittany. Drew, yeah, Drew, Drew Davis is talking about uh, Patrick Mahomes' uh, brother and his and and his and his and his wife. And about a year ago, this with this this not, not so much this season, but last season. Yeah, like they were all over social media, just kind of embarrassing themselves and other people, and getting a lot of getting. Getting a lot of hate, getting a lot of hate spread towards Kansas City's way, basically just by virtue of them being like social media people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this this season, they this season they really toned it down. The the, the fans in Kansas City kind of turned on them specific, like literally, like Chiefs fans were like, both of you need to shut the fuck up and just let this dude play. Kansas Kansas mm-hmm. City is this weird, like Missouri and this this area of, of the country. It, it's kind of like, you know, how would you put it, like? Talk is very cheap out here, right? Yeah. So people, people out here, when, you know, when we talk about expectations and you know, social, social, uh, um, social, um, gosh darn it, um, social graces. You know what I mean? Like people don't, people, a lot of people out here don't appreciate. They're very old fashioned out here a lot of times. So yeah. like, when people start get, you know, when we start getting hate because of somebody who doesn't even fucking play on the team, like people turn on that like real quick. So this season, they oh, really yeah. took, a, they took a huge step back this season haven't heard fucking hide nor hair of them basically all season but drew davis is not wrong because even though we got two super bowls in the last four years patrick mahomes still has a brother named jackson and a wife named Brittany. right (laughs) poor bastard fucking football right there (laughs) but see that's the thing is you know patrick I have no problem with Patrick Mahomes. Like he's right. he's right. He knows how to do his job and he does it. My issue is his people. Okay. Well, and because they, they 
But see, Everybody's that's, that's crew, even right? exactly. And and that's the thing is, you know, his wife and his brother are complete and utter idiots. Well, when when, when they have an audience, you know what I mean? Like that's probably I'm sure there's a reason he's married to her. And if, and of course, you know, you, you get stuck with whoever your siblings are, regardless. You don't really have a say in that. But it's like, you know, there, there's there's a there's a way to be and a way not to be. That's like, like you know, when we talk on this show and we've talked about it many, many times, how when we are on this podcast, this is not necessarily how we are outside, you know, the front door of our houses. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if you met me in the streets, I wouldn't necessarily act like how I act on this podcast sometimes. Does that make sense? Is, you know, these are caricatures of ourselves. Yes, it's still kind of ourselves, but it's a lot more of a caricature because I wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily get this, a lot of this out of me. Like, like if you just met me randomly, you know, somewhere, right. Having a pint at the fucking corner pub. You know what I mean? What's up, so, big Grizz Bear? Oh, we got big Grizz in the house, dude. Welcome, welcome, dude. Welcome, yeah, we're, welcome. Well, don't, we're watch, we're on Twitch as well. Just so good. You know, just okay, so good, you guys good. know, good, good. we're branching. Drew Davis says me either. Patrick is great at what he does. Tom Brady was good at what he does. Still hate the Patriots as a team. Is still dislike Jackson and Brittany. Won't stop them from being who they are. Playmakers. playmakers. Yep, playmakers. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly so, right. So, so, th- so they know how to feed the algorithm. Basically, well, and with a guy like Patrick Mahomes, um, he he's gone so far so fast in his career. It's getting uh, yeah, that's Tim <laughs> and my buddy Tim. Dude, that's one of my brothers from Tucson. Freaking like, welcome, welcome, <laughs> good to see you, man. He's saying he's saying lies, Jay, lies. Yeah, but when you get when you got a guy like Patrick Mahomes, he's the face of the NFL. He's playing absolutely spectacularly, like every fucking year. You got, he is the he, he is the reigning NFL MVP. The reigning fucking Super Bowl champion now, you know we're talking like <laughs> you have to be a playmaker. You have to make shit happen. Mm-hmm. By the way, there's they, they they came out with a stat uh, this week of um, winning percentages, and it's winning percentages when you're down by ten points. And Mahomes has this stupid winning record. He has a winning record when his team is down by ten points or more. And it's like, and we're mm-hmm. talking like against everybody else in the NFL from for all time. It's a it's a ridiculous stat, and it's just like and some of the things the Chiefs do and the, the Chiefs have done in the last few years, not just not just this year, even the last couple of years we haven't won the Super Bowl. The some of the stuff we do is just they, they make shit happen, and and it's it is yeah. really hard to it is really hard to quantify in the game of football. I know there's a plenty of football fans out there that know the game a lot better than I do, but I've been watching the fucking thing for almost forty years, so it's kind of like I, I know enough when the team clicks like that and they can just make, make stuff happen, call it pulling it out of your ass. I don't care. You know, one of the, there was a play in the Super Bowl. I think it was the last touchdown we scored. They had the, they were all mic'd up and the chiefs didn't even, they ran the wrong play. So like the, the players were doing the wrong thing. A couple of the players were doing the wrong thing, going the wrong way. And we scored a fucking wide open touchdown off of that. And like they were Mahomes, still, and they yeah. still had open communication. They made it happen. They made it like Mahomes paid enough attention. You could see that you can literally in the video, you can see the confusion on his face. He's looking, I think he's looking to his right. And then he looks left and he sees this dude just by him fucking self, you know, like in like, you know, five feet away from the fucking end zone. The dude practically just fucking walked in. Yeah. I mean, dude, it, it was a great fucking game. It, it, it turned, it, it really, it turned into a dog fight. And yeah. where, where, where me and Joe, where me and Joe both thought the Eagles would kind of fold, the, that happened for the Chiefs towards the end of the first half. But the Eagles did not fucking fold. The Eagles That's just, great. the Eagles just, their defense started, their defense started giving up points. Basically, is what happened, and and their offense yeah. stopped stopped scoring. So like that's really what that's really what occurred is like their offense stopped scoring, and the Chiefs' offense is right up there as the, the best in the NFL. You know what I mean? So. And the thing is, the Eagles offense didn't stop scoring to the point where it was considered a crumble or them just completely That's right. They stayed leaving in the, the game. They stayed, they stayed in, in the game. The game. Yep. They got, you know, they 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 they, they tried to stay neck and neck. They were within neck they, and neck still. Yep. So it wasn't yep. a complete blowout or a crumble no. or anything was, of that nature. They were there. It was yep. just they were there was a breakdown in communication big time kind of like how you know there almost was that breakdown in communication with that last touchdown the Chiefs scored but luckily Mahomes knew what to watch for he was watching every one of the guys on his team he was paying fucking attention he saw somebody wide the fuck open got the ball to him and they scored 
even though that wasn't the play they were supposed to fucking be doing. Like right. the offensive right. coordinator said, do this, go left. The team went fucking and Eagles, right. And the Eagles and the Eagles picked up on it. And that's why that that's why that one fucking guy who ended up just wide open where he could just like dick walk himself into the fucking end zone. You know what I mean? Like just freaking mm-hmm. sashay right in there, like he owned the fucking place, you know, because that was everybody like the Eagles saw it coming and the Eagles actually their defense did the right thing. Like they they shifted like as soon now as the I Chiefs do. Did, yeah. And left that I do one, want to left talk that about one fucking weirdo, the one weirdo who like didn't know what the fuck was going on, ends up scoring a Super Bowl in the touchdown because everybody fucked I, up. <laughs> I do want to talk about though how you know in the last like two minutes of the game, Chiefs great clock management. Oh God, yes. Oh and God, yes. I want to say how you know how it it. I I props props to the receiver on one of those last plays when they were trying to run the clock down and it would have been his first time ever scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And he straight up dead end stops one yard from the fucking goal line. That's right. And that's that, that, that is trying to run the clock down. So that way when fucking the Eagles got the ball back, they didn't have enough time to fucking make it back down the field. Anything that's fucking, that is like, that's, that is Andy Reid making up for fucking past mistakes when he was the coach in Philadelphia. That was a big critique in Philadelphia when he was mm-hmm. the Eagles head coach. Freaking, We've seen it a few times, not not very often. He has gotten a lot better these last 10 years that he's been uh, with, with the Chiefs. But oh, yeah. we've seen it, we have seen it a few times in, in years past. That was like Andy Reid making up for every clock management mistake he's ever made in his in his history as a head coach because that was and, – and props props to the fucking – Again, to yeah, because he downed it, he did the right thing, and the Chiefs won a Super Bowl off the back of that. Like, because God knows what would have happened yeah. if, yes, we, yes, we would have been he, that much farther, we'd have been seven points and they would have needed a touchdown. But if all I need is, is a touchdown and a Hail Mary, dude, like sometimes that happens too. So it's one of those, yeah. like, yeah, we'll see. And that's that's the big thing. They would have, you know, if he made that, it would have given it would have given the Chiefs a full, you know, a full touchdown lead. However, the Eagles then. Could have gotten a touchdown and then pulled a fucking two point conversion out their ass and yep. took the game if he didn't do that. That's Anything right. was possible if all the he way until, until that the clock fucking says, touchdown. Until the clock says fucking zero. Until the clock mm-hmm. says fucking zero. You know, and that's and that's one of those things where, but yeah. So that was man. It was I, like I said, the Chiefs Chiefs had to give us a heart attack in Kansas City, but they pulled they pulled it off. The entire fucking area is fucking happy. Fucking, you know, congratulations, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs as an organization, as a football team. Um, everybody, everybody in the in the area, all Chiefs fans worldwide, dude. Congratulations, your team is once again for the second time in four years NFL champions, champions of the world. So freaking absolutely enjoy yourselves, enjoy yourselves responsibly. And yeah, like, should we go into like kind of like yeah, what the it looks like around, now. around so- yeah, so. Like I said, I, so this week is – this week is – go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I want to add in that that fucking video of Mahomes giving the fan the trophy and then walking away is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. He got a little – He was he, fucking he, blitzed. Dude, he – dude. <laughs> so nobody nobody knows the exact uh, SOP on the Chiefs during the season, but there are, there are rumors that Andy Reid keeps a tight ship during the season – so when you see Patrick Mahomes getting sloshy off of like you know basically watered down Bud Light, you are you guys I mean? echoing? Like, I don't hear an echo. No. no. All right. Cool. Yeah, cool. I don't cool, hear cool. an echo. Well, you guys, you might, and you might have to full screen that, John, because that a couple of the pictures in there are a little not blurry. But I, the, the, the I glare cannot. Oh shit! Whoa. Damn <laughs> but uh, the um, the uh, I yeah, I can't zoom. I can't zoom into them oh, as best. As <laughs> well, we'll see, and, and that's more of a that's more of a league thing now. Is well, that he might they're have, not they allowed been, to you know they might have been teetotal and during the season. You know what I mean? Where you, yeah. you might only have a beer or two a week, maybe if you know, they'll, like during they'll the like then, on the flights in between you know home and the fucking visiting field right. that they're going to and stuff. They'll but have a going, beer or two. Yeah, but nobody's partying the night before fucking practice. Yeah. This ain't, this ain't fucking this ain't Lynn Dawson's this ain't Lynn Dawson's Chiefs, dude. This is fucking Patrick Mahomes fucking Chiefs, yeah. dude. And this is, this is a new a new generation where like just just like in the army, 
you know, in Vietnam, they fucking had beers with their fucking steaks, dude. When they went back, when they, when they, when they rotated back to the rear, dude, I never fucking, I never officially got to drink anything in Afghanistan, even if I did a few times. Right. But <laughs> I, I um, officially, yeah. officially, you're not, you know, officially, we're not, we're, officially it never fucking happened. Right. Um, so it's that's like, in? there you go. Yes. That's dude, dude, keep doing that. Keep going. You, you had it like a little bit more enhance. Enhance. That's, <laughs> I'm you. I'm yeah. it worked that way, Jay. Right. There. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's about as zoomed in as we're going to get. God fucking was, damn it. God, God isn't going to help you, dude. Like, who are you talking to? Uh, damn it, to? John. I'll just fucking do this. Hold on. <laughs> I got it. Watch, We're already we're watch already John there. Have a stroke. <laughs> yeah, start it. I'm start pulling it up with, just uh, in case, this. John. Just fucking back, in case. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. We'll we'll do that. We'll do the. We uh, we'll do the. That's the go. first one right there. Yeah. So this, yeah, that was, that was kind of at the stage uh, after everybody. And then, yeah, if you want to start scrolling, I can kind of like give a little, a quick recap of like what you're seeing basically. So that's one of our players towards the end of the rally. This is when everybody got to the stage after the parade, you know, so the, the parade is, you're kind of going backwards, but that's okay, John, don't worry about it. So this was just the players, you know, like enjoying themselves on the stage. You see, uh, you see a couple of them right there, dude, they brought out our freaking, our linemen, obviously Mahomes and Kelsey were there. They spoke to the crowd. And yes, when, when Mahomes spoke to the crowd, he was a little sloshy. Like, like I, I'm down here. Uh, I've watched the videos. <laughs> I was talking. I was talking to my parents. I asked my parents if they watched it. You know, I was talking to my parents yesterday, and they were like, "Yeah, like Mahomes was a little drunk, wasn't he?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "Mom, come on, like Ma, come on." Yeah, he 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 got twisted, dude. Like, like that's this is his kids freaking. First kids time freaking he's been able to drink in fucking months so, dude, <laughs> like this. I didn't, so. I didn't join the army until I was 29 years old. This motherfucker is 27. He's already got two MVPs and two fucking Super Bowl rings, dude, under his belt, and a third and a third Super Bowl appearance. He's never his mm -hmm. seasons with the Chiefs has never gone less than the AFC Championship. Yeah, never gone less than. We've made yeah. it to the AFC Championship every year he started. So that that's Mahomes right there. He's so wearing the. He's fucking, got the WWE belt. Of course, I was going to say, gonna say he's got the fucking world uh, world title for WWE uh, wrapped around which, his waist. Which, yep. which which there's a possibility. That that is one that was gifted to them from the WWE because WWE has a tradition they that do. they make they make side plates for a championship team that has won either like the World they Series and, or the Super Bowl. Yeah, if they so that is actually because I, I read up on that. It could it be the one. The oh, one that is that, the gifted uh, one. That it's the gifted one. It's the one that was nice. given to the Chiefs. Um, specifically, it was gifted to Mahomes. On the last one. From the last one, and, and so he wore it. Yeah, they haven't wore it received the, the new one yet. That's, so, yep. yep, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, he was wearing the one that he got from when we won in uh, uh, goddamn uh, 2020. That was what, so, I, yeah, I have, I have one, that, that's I have one. That's it, was a good day, it was a good day, and like, yeah, yeah if you keep if you keep if you keep scrolling, uh, I'll show you here, freaking, uh, I mean. Here's my thing. I'm not going to be mad at the kid for being sloshed during a victory parade. Oh, Dude, no. No. is like, like you said, Jay, he's what, 27, and this is his second fucking ring. Like, second ring, second fucking, MVP. You, you've never, he, he's his season, get fucking hammered. <laughs> his season has never ended before the AFC championship yet. I mean, the mm -hmm. kid is on fucking yeah. fire. He's been, he's been on fire since we fucking got him. You know what I mean? Like, and, you know, to all the people, because, you know, a insane. lot of people are like, oh, that. they're grooming him to be the next Brady. They're grooming. Fuck it. So what if he's the next fucking Brady? Right. Dude, he at least saying, has like, more fucking common you, sense than fucking Brady don't does. You strive, don't you strive to be, to have that kind of skill? Isn't that the goal in the end, at the end of the day? Well, here's the, here's the thing. Prior to Brady, the most Super Bowls any quarterback had won was four. Yeah. Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes is already halfway fucking there. And he's and he's yeah. only been in the, he's only been excuse me he's only been a starter for five years he's his rookie his rookie his rookie year he redshirted under Alex Smith and people kind of yeah. overlook that quite a bit but that the, the five years that he has started you know what I mean like he is just like mm -hmm. it's it's he's already got like it you're talking about a hall of fame, it. it's a hall of fame career even if he got injured tomorrow and could never play another game for the rest of his life he is probably still a shoe in for the fucking hall of fame. Like you're talking like this kid is on a trajectory that is but so see, far, so far, so fast and so high all at once. You're like, 
I'm hands I'm hands off, dude. I'm I'm just I'm 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 enjoying it. I'm taking it in as as a Chiefs fan, a long suffering Chiefs fan. Before Mahomes came on board, I'm just fucking taking this shit in. You know, just enjoying so, the moment. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna go off of what Gonzo just said here. He's only lost to Brady in the Super Bowl, which is a legit competitor. That is a hundred percent accurate. I mean, out of all the no out of shit. the times that, out of the three times. Mahomes has taken the Chiefs. Mahomes and the Chiefs has gone to the Super Bowl. The only time he lost was to Brady and the Bucks. Well, and and then on top of that, he didn't have a bad game that game. Like we talked about, no. remember we we talked about that last week, where it was like that one wasn't really on Mahomes. The the Chiefs fucking around him basically collapsed, and it was it turned it was into, the team it, around him because they were still into, somewhat rebuilding. Yeah. I still, it still, it still hurts my heart a little bit, but I still laugh about how fucking shitty we played that game. That oh, was, I mean, they, terrible, they, terrible they got, they pulled game. out the, they pulled out the LMTVs. They did. They did. That was those. So those, and you can see kind of in the background on the second one, the one behind the first one, you can see some of the soldiers hanging out of the back. Like that, those were the first, yeah. those were the first ones that had like the mayor, uh, one of our congressmen in it, a um, couple other That's people. That's really cool. They, so dude, I mean, so we, we went around but, the corner. We went around the corner to our little pub. We 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 debated going to the parade, but it just this year wasn't going to work. So we we went around the corner to our little corner pub, and we had lunch and we had lunch and watched the parade on the TV while it was while it was live, basically. So and and the, they had all it was on every TV and they had the volume turned up mm -hmm. and it was it was something. It was really something. I mean, so. the one thing I do I do want to say that I I like about Mahomes, and I'm not a Chiefs fan at all. Mm -hmm. Um, is the fact that at such a young age he has not gotten fucking cocky already no, having no. you know a win taking the team to the fucking AFC championship every fucking year he Literally. has stayed humble he knows what his job mm. is he goes out he fucking performs and he gets there that's yeah. all there is to it unlike Brady who you know after the first ring Brady got fucking cocky well, he also put his money where his mouth is, so it's kind of like you know, love but him or hate at him. At the same time, <laughs> I can't hate Brady because he is, you know, currently he is the goat of the fucking NFL. I'm going to tell you guys um, right now, like if you if you if you put a gun to my head and said make a bet right now, I'm going to bet that Mahomes does not surpass Brady because what Brady has done is so goddamn hard in the in the sport of fucking football. It is it is it is it is. It is it is tantamount to impossible. Like what Brady did. Have grandkids is, before there's another quarterback that can fucking do a Brady. I, I'm going to go ahead and say it now. I'm going to be in adult would, fucking diapers rolling around in my fucking hover around in the goddamn old folks home Mahomes before there's another go, Brady in the fucking NFL. Mahomes would have to go to another eight or excuse me, seven Super Bowls, seven Super Bowls and win at least five of them to match mm -hmm. Brady. That's just to that's just to match him. Just to yeah. match, like not to fucking not to surpass, just to fucking yeah. match him. This so is that's an like, incredible. That gives you an idea of like of the of the you know the statistical. Like Brady, Brady is legitimately the Thanos of the NFL. He is motherfucking oh, around, walking around with a goddamn infinity gauntlet and plus it's not two his, extra stones. And it's not even his regular season stats. It's his fucking playoff stats. It's not the. It's not. It's not just what they did. In the, what he did in the regular season. It's it's what he did when they every time like pretty much every fucking time the Patriots made the fucking playoffs with Brady they were a mm -hmm. legit threat they were they were going to the Super Bowl or you had to fucking stop them from going to the Super Bowl and that was and now and now the fucking Patriots aren't even fucking there because they're rebuilding well, after losing their fucking players better way to better way to say that is now in the AFC the fucking Super Bowl fucking the, the path of the Super Bowl fucking comes through Kansas City so that's just yeah. John do you want to do you want do you want to show everybody what it sounded like in uh in good old Kansas City fucking uh oh, after I'm, the uh when the clock ran I'm, out? Oh, hang on, I'm still getting there. I'm looking at this picture too, where I obviously oh, that's the World War One museum. Yeah, that's Liberty Memorial, and that's so you and me went there. So uh, that is ago. so that where they're standing right there is what I was looking at and pointing at, asking you what the fuck is going on down there. Union Station, yeah. So the state, the stage was a, a place called Union Station. Yeah, and 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 they and the stage was there facing the Liberty Memorial and the World War One museum. So yes, and that's crazy. how deep the crowd was basically like when they were all there so that yeah and then that's a fucking that poster came out like literally the night of and i love the fact that you know uh for 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 being born in kansas city and a lifelong you know chiefs and royals fan 
the fact that this Super Bowl was played in my uh, the state where I grew up in Arizona was really cool. So I love the little saguaro cactus there, you know, from like where I grew up, you know. Yeah, to, that's this cool. Was the, this was the first time in three Chiefs Super Bowl appearances that I was actually able to finally be in Kansas City when the game occurred. And that was like that so, was very that was very cool. So. So that, actually, uh, speaking about the Royals, because you just brought it up, uh, oh Jay, their developmental team is actually a town over from where I'm at. Which one? Which one? Um, the Burlington Royals. Yes. Well, their old a. developmental team. Is yeah, double, double A team. Double A. Yeah, I was going to say it's either, their yeah. double A team. The Burlington yeah. Royals is um, actually when I left my hometown after I, you know, fully got out of the military. Mm -hmm. The town I moved into was Burlington, North Carolina, which is where their double A team was, which I'm not sure if they are now because they just, you know, due to COVID, they rebranded and changed their fucking name to the Sock Puppets okay. um, because the, the fucking town did like a fucking Facebook poll like and name, everybody yeah, voted on a fucking new name and yeah, yeah. they renamed it the Sock Puppets. And I'm like, why the fuck would you do that? That's hilarious. Um, but you know, just a little little fun fact is you know their sure. double A team sure. is this, from my these, fucking area, which is hilarious. Real quick, these uh these last two uh things that John showed these uh, the newspapers, um I got a that copy. is a high def newspaper, man. That shit is well, high def. They, they took a they're that's a digital they're, copy. They were they were <laughs> they, so they were uh they're selling those. It's a, it's the special edition of the Kansas City Star. They're five bucks. They're already online for fifty. So like. Dead ass, like that, hey, it happens people. every time. That doesn't oh, surprise yeah. me because so I mean, I just, with I just, any type, I just bought one. Rebellia. I just, I just bought one, and I will keep it for that's my that's my memento for being for finally making it to Kansas City when one of my teams fucking won the, you know won the world championship. So, and this is the newspaper you own. I'm assuming both. Of, it's both of them. So that that's the front page, and that sports section is the one that says "Buy Eagles Buy." That's okay. so both, both of the both of those are included in the in the in the uh, special edition basically, and then um, and then yeah. Speaking of speaking of special freaking so, when when the clock finally ran out, I I uh, we're not going to show the long video. I took two videos, and I the first one I started inside the house we were in because we we ended up finishing the game at a at a house party. I I we were in the house. You hear everybody in the house like hollering. I walk outside and I just start walking down the street. And you can hear people screaming in the streets and yelling and hooping and hollering. But then you you know you start hearing, you know, people shooting off fireworks and and then eventually you start hearing gunfire. And in this video, oh, I think what is it? it's about it's about, a, it's about it's about it's about like a minute, a minute and a half or a minute fifty one. If you if you guys want to, John's going to turn the sound up. But I want you guys to just listen and you can hear the staccato. You can tell what which ones are fireworks and you can tell which ones are gunfire. So if you listen close, John's going to turn it down and I'm going to. Mute, mute my microphone. I want you guys to listen for just a couple minutes. This is what Kansas City, Missouri sounded like when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Someone definitely got a jammed weapon. I heard it too, John. <laughs> Yes! 
I just love how calm and how stable Jay's fucking camera control was during that. Dude, I felt I felt like I was back home in I felt like I was back home in Afghanistan, dude. Like I was fucking I, chilling, dude. I, I my favorite part. Say. My favorite part was when you could clearly tell somebody done busted out a fucking AR and let off a couple pop, rounds. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> yep. You know what's funny? How like, um, because you know it's been a while since. Well, like every time New York won, that we always, you know, being right across the river, that excitement was always there too. So I know how you feel, Jay. But I have a feeling that if New York finally, finally wins something this fucking year, which I feel it, and we were so close last year, this year, if something, ha- it's it's not going to be too far off. I don't know about the guns though, because dude, I'll tell you, New York is so. Thing- that was the only thing you know we we even mentioned it last week was like i even said it i was like don't 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 shoot guns shoot fireworks not guns because bullets bullets do come down and there were there were a couple of pictures uh on reddit a couple of days after that a couple of bullets had like gone through like cars you know what i mean like falling oh yeah yeah dude like it's not kids don't fucking fire guns into the air dude don't fire guns into the fucking ground okay like jesus christ have some fucking discipline with your fucking weapons dude all right like but I get the excitement, but that's that is a, that's that's how close we were to the fucking to the heart of the to the heart of freaking Kansas City, dude. Like that was it, dude. Well, so well, I just want to say for me to, to <laughs> piggyback off of what Jay was saying real quick about the don't fire guns thing. When I uh, when I was when I was living in my last house before I moved before me and my ex wife split up, I actually had made a concrete like a box. It was wood on the outside i framed it out filled it with concrete it was like six feet tall that i would use to you know like test ammunition and shit in my backyard Mm -hmm. so that way the bullet would fucking stop and when one of my teams would win and there'd be celebrations and shit like that i would fire into the fucking box that way the bullet's not coming down and hitting anything fucking vital correct that's and, and if you're on your own land and you yes if there are there are safe ways to do exactly that I think that's yeah. now I think that's in Kansas point. City in Kansas City it's all fucking city don't yeah. be fucking well, doing that shit yeah you're well, gonna and kill then, somebody and then you got you you've got you've got the city and then immediately outside you have all the you know the, the farmland basically so like every, everybody's yeah. got fucking everybody and their mom's got guns here dude like it's not oh I know. <laughs> It's not exactly the I mean, wild west, but it might as well be. It's, it's the same. I mean, you know, it, here in here in North Carolina, we've everybody's got fucking guns. We all have them. It's no big thing. No you know, I've got yeah. fucking, I've got a goddamn mount under my damn work desk that's a holster for my fucking pistol. And I do. Oh, I, I forgot to add uh, during the parade. So, in contrast to Philadelphia, like we were talking about Philly fans earlier, uh, there were uh, officially there were two arrests during the during the parade that's it so c- congratulations to kansas city missouri for being fucking classy when you win like you guys made made all of us very proud okay so like regardless regardless of whether regardless of whether or not i was in the uh the general vicinity of kansas city when we won mm-hmm. good job kansas city dude congratulations freaking we are yes. for, at least for, for the entire next 365 days we are world champions in kansas city missouri so congratulations again to the chiefs so exactly yep. congrats chiefs congrats mahomes congrats andy reed um for you know doing what you do and turning things around after you left philly um yep. and actually making a championship team absolutely what did let's uh what did you guys uh what did you guys do this week like let's uh let's Let's uh, get back onto the uh, the DD two fourteen side, freaking. All right, How was yeah, your guys' yeah. week? Well, fo- football's over, so fucking fantastic. Now we're coming into what? Baseball, uh, baseball ain't baseball? over. Baseball be next. Yeah, uh, spring uh, pitchers and catchers report to spring training next yep. month. Next yep. month. Shit. Yes, yeah. Sir. Uh, yeah. Yep. Fuck. Some of them. Some no, of them might be reporting no, this, now. No, no. This, this month because next month is fucking yeah. spring training. No, it's this yeah. month. Yeah, yeah they're already reporting. reporting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, things are looking, things are looking good. I'm pretty excited. Um, but as good. far as this week for me, man, uh, you w- you want to go first, Joe, or do you want me to take it? So, I mean, this I, I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, this I, w- week, I want because I want to hear about that desk because I've been I've been wanting because I know you talked about getting it. So, so um, right before I left for my vacation last week for my you know little 
going out of town to go to a concert and shit, which we talked about last week on the show. Um, my desk, I had two matching desks, both of them L-shaped, one for my podcast streaming gaming fucking rig and all that shit, one for work because I work from home. Um, that Wednesday before, I'm sitting out in the living room. I We had my daughter for the fucking week. Um, sitting out there, we're playing fucking Mario Kart on the Switch, talking shit to each other. I hear this loud crack and boom in my fucking office. I come in here. My fucking work desk had just fucking broke. Like, and there wasn't enough weight on it to justify like the tabletop snapping. It just fucking snapped. So I had fixed it enough to be able to get by for a couple days or whatnot. Um, and I was like, you know what? Since this fucking happened, I planned on getting a stand sit desk once we moved out of our apartment. Um, for my work setup because, you know, I sit in a chair for eight hours there. And then most evenings I get off work, I go eat dinner. I come swap over to my fucking gaming setup and I sit again. Um, so we're out of town. We're visiting with our buddies and shit. They have, they both work from home also, and they have stand sit desks. And he was just, you know, up one side, down the other. Listen, dude, if you've got to replace it, go ahead and get the stand sit desk. It's worth the fucking money. He said, You know, he just convinced me, so I fucking went ahead, pressed the fucking buy button on fucking Amazon on Saturday. Shit showed up uh, Wednesday. It wasn't supposed to show up till Friday, so it showed up Wednesday at, like, fucking 7.45 in the morning. Um, So I'm sitting there in a fucking meeting for work, putting together my new fucking desk. (laughs) No fucks given. Zero fucks. Absolutely no Zero. fucks given. Um, Zero fucks ever given, ever. You know, here's the thing. I always joke around when I started this current job, I was holding out for a management position and now I'm in a fucking management position and now I'm holding out for a higher management position. So I sit around and I, you know, bullshit, but I still get work done because I might joke around at work, you know, 70, 80% of the time, but 110% of the time I take my job seriously. Bullshit. Well, sure. um, some days, and, some days, you know, some days, some days there's more to do than others. And the, the fact that exactly. bosses can't fuck, the fact that a lot of bosses and a lot of jobs are fuck the army, dude, can't fucking take that more seriously is like, you know, if, if there's something to do, and, there's something to do. If, there, if there's not fucking find something more productive and, to do. You know what I mean? And, like, and that's the thing, you know, like, so I'm, I put the desk together fucking, I will say out of all the desks I've put together in the past seven years of fucking working from home and changing up things, redoing setups um, and all that by far, one of the easiest fucking desks I put together. Cool. Um, The motherfuckers heavy. Now the basin shit's heavy. It ships in two separate boxes. One box has the legs with the motors and everything because it is, you know, motorized fucking stand sit desk. So mm. there's electronic components to make it raise and lower um and then the other box is just the tabletop so you know i i put the desk together i actually since putting it together and getting it all set back up getting all my equipment back on it for work i actually stand more than i have it in seated position seated position um that's good for you and Well, and that's the thing. So, you know, my back's been, I've got back problems um, from jumping out of fucking airplanes and shit. And And we we definitely ain't getting any fucking younger. (laughs) Exactly. And we're not getting any younger. So my back kills me from sitting in a chair all day. And that's why I've got the chair that I have, which is an ergonomic, you know, all the fucking bells and whistles ergonomic chair. It's mesh because I'm a bigger dude now than I was in the military. And I sweat like a stuffed pig, even when the fucking AC is set to 65 degrees and it's 32 degrees outside. Um, But you know, my back, I always have problems. I could stand up and tweak my back in the wrong way because of, you know, jumping out of airplanes and also getting older. My back feels a hundred times better now that I just have that freedom to, if I, feel like it's time to stand for a little bit, I can fucking stay and, you know, still get my work done. The desk, I will say, as far as the ordering process, delivery, all that, I'll give, this is the only time you're going to hear me give fucking FedEx a decent fucking rating for delivering anything. Well, no, 
two times I Brandon give Cleary, FedEx welcome, a decent rating. Welcome, welcome. Brandon Cleary, What's welcome. going on, Brandon? Um, two times. First time, when I shipped uh, John his computer, the motherfucker showed up at like 7.30 in the morning to John the day it was supposed to be delivered. And the second time now with my desk, because initially it wasn't supposed to show up till Friday and the and FedEx pulled it out their ass and got it to me by fucking 7.30 in the morning on a Wednesday. Cool. Um, okay. So delivery gets, gets uh, I'm going to give them a nine and a half out of 10 because I've got way too many bad experiences with FedEx to give them a full 10 out of 10. Sure. Um, That's pretty quick though. That's a pretty quick fucking turnaround. It must and have had, then must, set up. In the back. Set up and install. Get, I'm giving that a 10 out of 10. Um, because it was easy to put together. The instructions were clear. It didn't take more than an hour and a half to get the whole desk set up, put together. Um, so that's, you know, that's part of my week. The other part of my week, I finished the main campaign for Hogwarts Legacy. Um, okay. Okay. Now, I am going to go ahead and say there's going to be a little bit of spoilers here. If you haven't finished the game, if you plan on playing the game and you haven't, been able to get the game yet because you're on switch xbox one or ps4 since that doesn't come out till april um the main story for the game fucking phenomenal um very fluid has replayability just because you know you play through it the first time you choose your house that you're going to be in whether it's Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. You can replay it, and there's different side quests for each different house. Okay. Um, and the main story differs a little bit also, depending on what house you go into when you start the game. Um, so there who is did, replayability. You, who did you choose? So I'm 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 Slytherin until the day I die. Which ones are those? Is that is that Harry Potter's? No. no, that's uh Malfoy. Voldemort was Slytherin, Malfoy was Slytherin, Snape was Slytherin, all the oh, bad guys. Oh, oh the oh the bad guys. Okay, cool. The assholes, the uh jerks, the uh the anti-heroes. Let me get let me guess. They were also the what like that's probably the strongest team in general, right? Like throughout the throughout the books. I never read this shit, so like um you know, like, were so, they a strong team? They a strong uh, team? No, but Russia, but Russia's wizard in school got some fucking buku motherfuckers in there. Like Victor so, Crumb, I won't. I won't say they were the strongest team because obviously the fucking you know the good side won, but they were the uh, more hodgepodge team because you had like uh, Snape, Severus Snape. He had you know feelings for Harry's mom growing up. They knew each other as kids before they went to Hogwarts. Is that a serious was, side plot? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Somebody wanted to bang out Harry's mom, dude. That's a serious side plot in the fucking books. Is that real? So yeah, no, like there's this whole fucking like <laughs> hidden love story that you don't find the, out the full details of until the end of the last fucking book. Um Harry's mom got around. No, she never no, got she with didn't. him, but he just he he had such strong feelings that he was he in was love with her. He was oh. one of the death eaters, he was one of the bad guys, so and then him. For all. And then Man. because he cared so much about Lily, Harry Harry Potter's mom, he ended up becoming a double agent and still working for the bad guys, but also working for the good guys during the Wizarding War to the extent that he was giving the good side information on the bad side and he was one of um wow. he was what he was an occlumen which pretty much means he could control and keep people from being able to read his mind and he was so powerful he was able to keep Voldemort the big bad of the whole fucking series right. I know being that able to read his mind to know to to be able to keep it a hidden that he was doing this double agent shit wow. um just like, I have I have two big characters in the books that I really really like as characters and enjoyed, and that Sirius Black, which is Harry's godfather, who Gary Oldman framed. Gary Ooh. Oldman played him in the Ooh. movies, who got framed for killing somebody when he didn't, and they thought he was a Death Eater, and why then uh, Snape. Why would, why would you be framing with this disrespect? 
Why would you ever frame me with this disrespect? I don't, I don't understand. And and Snape, who was you know protecting Harry in a sense secretly the entire fucking time, and nobody really knew it until the fucking end yeah. because in the sixth book snape fucking ends up killing dumbledore the headmaster yeah, i remember that takes over the school that. that's like a big, that's like a and everybody internet. was pissed off and then when snape gets killed by voldemort harry finds out the truth and he becomes an anti-hero yeah huh. um, it's one, of the, it's one so, of the greatest stories through, through the whole lore of it so kind of the backstory the reason i went into that is because in the game i named my character Sirius snape after both Sirius Black and Severus. Um, just just because my two favorite characters mesh them together. Sirius Snape. Um, yeah, I know. Doesn't really roll off the fucking tongue. But <laughs> well played, John. Well played. <laughs> Sirius, no, I like, man, I, 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 I like how you something like I like, like how you're nerding out. I like how I like the fact that you can nerd out to this. Like, like I, I make, but, but it, it has um, such a good poke, history to it. It has I poke, such a good I poke history a lot of fun, to it. But I poke a lot of fun. But the reality is, dude, like, dude, if you're when you're into something, dude, that ain't fuck, like fucking. Well, see, and, and that's kid. the thing. Like, I, when they announced the game, what like six fucking years ago, right. I was like, oh yes, we're getting an open world fucking RPG style Harry Potter game. They had to keep fucking delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. Then as we got closer to launch, there was this big fucking blow up because JK Rowling made some comments against the uh, transgender community. Well, why don't you talk about this off? Why don't you talk about what was found in the one house? So, so in, in the game, because Mm -hmm. people of the LGBTQ community Mm -hmm. were boycotting the game because of transgender phobic uh transphobic comments made by the author of the books and the developers to make a sly at jk rowling because of these comments made the owner of one of the uh established establishments in hogsmeade which is the village right outside of hogwarts a transgender uh person Oh, and cool. and and then in the school, there's a portrait on the wall of a witch burning at the stakes, and the witch is J.K. Rowling, is the author right. of the fucking books. Oh, holy shit, that's dope. So, that's so the meta devs, as fuck. that is meta. The as devs fuck. pretty much gave the author of the books a middle finger, and did these things. Dope. Because of that, the that's uproar fucking, that was happening, yeah. that's fuck, dude. That's fucking that's fucking punk rock right there, dude. I'm fucking down with and, that shit. Yeah. fucking anarchy, and, and, anarchy in the UK, anarchy in the UK, dude. That's fucking and and that's, that's my dope. whole thing is you know. So the devs kept trying to say you know there was a statement the developers came with came out with their PR team came out with after all this uproar. Pretty much, you know, we understand there's some uh, some tension because of some likeness that, that jk no that jk rowling made towards the trans community we yeah. want everybody to understand that we do not agree with said statements um these things to try to they help weren't out. even working with her no um the only thing is because it's a harry potter title she does get royalties from it because of the harry yep. potter namesake um and that's about it. Which is even um, funnier that she's still collecting the royalties from it, even with like oh, yeah. this happening. So it's it's actually and, kind of and you know the 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 big thing was you know when the game came out, there was a website that got released, um, where it was um, streamers that play that wizarding game dot com or some shit. The site's already been shut down, and pretty much what it was was anybody could log in with their Twitch login and find any streamer that they follow that streams the game uh-huh. to be able to unfollow them. It so completely I backfired. I don't understand. Pretty... That. What, what, wait, what? Explain so, that to me. So pretty much what it was, was you, you the community the that was boycotting. So <laughs> yeah. The, the, the community that was boycotting it made a website to try to hurt streamers that were going to play the game on stream because mm-hmm. of their 
their dislike of the fact that the game was still coming out after the remarks that the author wrote. Okay. And made. So they, um, so in other words, they were going, they were taking it a little too far. Exactly. Like, they were taking okay. it too far, but here's how the internet shot back. Okay. The site wasn't being used for the intentions that the people who want who paid to get the site made People were going to this site to find people that were playing the game to follow them and subscribe and give donations and drop bits <laughs> and give them fucking money because they were brave enough to still play the fucking game live on the internet. So it completely backfired and the developers of the website ended up pulling the website down because it was being used for oh. other things than what they created the website for. So they're still ass hurt. Yeah, yeah, so they're still completely ass hurt. Okay, I, l- let me interject real quick because I just want like this is uh, what do we what do we call these in the in the army? Uh, teachable moment, right? So for mm-hmm. all you fucking youngsters out there, it is a teachable in, moment actually. Dude, for all you youngsters out there, let your friendly neighborhood Jay impart a little bit of a little bit of wisdom that I, I, I may have acquired over the last forty two years of my fucking life. If you are so fucking butthurt about something that you fucking try to do something that subverts something else and that backfires on you and you are still not going to listen to the universe that you might fucking actually be wrong about something, you were never going to be happy in the first place. Sometimes you have to um, pick your fucking battles and choose the hill you fucking die on or the universe is going to fucking choose it for you. Okay. And that sounds like that's exactly what fucking happened to that website. So I'll shut the fuck exactly. up for a moment. That, that was your teachable um, moment fucking with, uh, with Jay. Like, well, I mean, I was going to kind of get into that also is that, you know, if you're that butt hurt, you need to just get off the fucking internet, to be honest. Yeah. Because I'm saying, you're going to run like, into shit. You're not going to fucking like it's time. Like, it's dude, the, like the, this, it, it is nice when things are nice. But this universe, this world, this earth we live on, our country, dude, like, it, it, it don't it's, give a fuck about you. You need to fucking make your own way. And it's fucking, literally, like, it's, it's going to be it's literally, it's going to be yeah, hard. It's literally game. lions versus mosquitoes. Yeah, man, you, you need like, to choose to be a lion in this world, man, because this world is going to, this world is going to fucking kick your fucking ass someday. And you have to be yep. tough that when it, that when that ass kicking comes. You can get the fuck back up and move the fuck on, Roger. All right, Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, get the fuck off the internet if you're having that those kind of issues, dude. Seriously, yeah. Get the, just just fucking so, stop it. Like, un- unplug your yeah. apps and fucking go take a walk in the woods and just enjoy nature, okay? Because you need to come back to fucking reality. Yeah, go ahead. So dude. now you know I've kind of got over the game a little bit. Talked about how it was. Um, at this point. I think last week I did rate the game for the little bit that I had played so far. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I gave it what, like a nine out of 10 or nine and a half. Yeah. Um, now that I've completed the main storyline, I still have a lot of quests and side stuff to do. Um, at this point, I'm actually, and this is the first time I've had a game do this in a long time. It gets mm-hmm. a big, veiny, throbbing 10 oh, out of boy. 10 now. Fucking oh. beat up them guts. Beat up them guts. Time that to is wild. My God. It's, 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 it's time to scramble. It's time to scramble some fucking ovaries, guys. Like, we're, we're, because we're, the we're thing is, <laughs> you've got replayability. You've got yeah. a great fucking story. Okay. You've got tons of additional content. The game just hit all the fucking marks perfectly for the first time. And that's because it didn't come from one of these AAA title studios. It didn't come from EA. It didn't come from Bethesda. It didn't come from Microsoft, Sony, any of these big name studios. It came from a small little indie studio that was contracted by Warner Brothers Gaming Division to make a fucking game. And instead of dealing with the typical fucking developer bullshit and the bureaucracy and the politics, they put out fucking content they and delayed it and served their favor they too. Kept delaying it, they kept delaying it, pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back because they weren't going to release an unfinished fucking game. They That's said this is going to be our first AAA Literally. game we released. We're going to do it right. 
So that way, the next time our name pops up that we're releasing a game, people come to us and believe in us and fucking purchase our shit. Right. Uh, well, that's how, that's kind of how Rockstar fucking started, is it not? Like, like it's, it is. But see, throw, the thing is, that's yes, the, that, that's the way you should be doing it. That's not. It's not. That's exactly. not a, uh, not a statement against this fucking company that's a statement against but see at the same time though at the same time though i'm waiting to see you know i'm waiting with rockstar they might redeem themselves they might because of what they've done with gta 6 with keep pushing it off pushing it off pushing it off well we'll see every i i mean i'm i'm extremely confident that gta 6 is going to be a a phenomenal game all the grand theft autos pretty much have been Oh but yeah. The, 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 the problem is is what they do after and what they did after GTA five is the problem. And lack of, and really, lack of communication too. It really man, exactly. it, it, it was just it was like 10 years of fucking disappointment. The game GTA five by itself, phenomenal game. Eventually, eventually the online became a lot more fun to play, but it, in those early days and the way they milked and the way they milked that fucking tit for so long, dude. It got really, and, really boring. Yeah, and it's, it's actually boring. funny that you say that because now GTA Online, I've said this before, the things that you can do in 5M, like sell meth, sell crack, <laughs> drive a taxi. You can like, do it in GTA. I like, selling, I like how selling drugs came ahead of fucking driving taxis in that list there, John. Because <laughs> now can you can do it. John's fucking uh, loyalty <laughs> Listen, fly. If you go to my streams, Clean Sanchez Media, Twitch.tv, by the way, guys, um, you'll see that all I've been doing is breaking into people's houses and stealing their LSD and their cocaine. Of, of course you do, because you're a fucking goon. God damn it, John. Well, you fucking you know? So, so I, I played RP with John for a bit on an old server that's no longer existent. Um, mm, mm, well, mm, it's still there. Mm. I can't talk about it. No oh boy, it's still up, and and it's being worked on. I can't t- I can't say any more than that. But John was definitely that shady motherfucker in a back alley, trying to get you to do crooked shit. Yeah, and like the God. motherfucker got me killed by the fucking. He was a cop. He was off duty and got me killed by the cops because of some <laughs> of the shady shit he was doing. Because I just happened to be riding around with him one day in the fucking city, and he decides to go fucking pull a heist. And I'm just like, la di da di da being fucking all innocent and shit, just trying to fucking do things, figure out the server, get a feel for it. This was like my first two or three days on the server. This motherfucker has no honor and has no business being there. a fucking law enforcement officer. Not, not, not in there. That game. Not now, now it is now it is funny because like all right because we, we need to move on i i have been like contemplating recently to switch over to like red dead i had okay. i you know there's um there, i mean it's it's only because like for me it's come to a point where some of these servers the rp is not number one you know the the character mm-hmm. the characterization the the personalities you know, it's like the content is preferred or over that. And and I mean that get it gets disheartening. Like for sure. me, it's about the immersion, the character, you know, and, and things like that, and building that character up. So sure. I mean, personally, that's what I like to see in RP servers. I don't want to go into mm-hmm. an RP server and make three million dollars in three days because then I have nothing else to do after that. You know? Um, not that that's happened to me, but for others that I do know, it's it it what do you do after that? You know, when you have everything, what do you do after that? But that that's that's enough of that. We'll get into a 5M conversation one day at GTA. But this week, the brand new show, Hello Tomorrow, has premiered. Okay. What's, now, uh, what service is this on? Uh, this is on Apple TV Plus. And as you know, I stand by Apple TV Plus, the damn communists. <laughs> you know, but they produce some really good fucking content, like for all mankind. Um, you know, for the, first they, couple they, for the first couple. Yeah, seasons. actually, I'm. I, it's still good. It's okay. still good. But anyways, <laughs> um, the hello tomorrow. The best way that I could describe this show is, um, if you understand the story of Fallout, right? There's a whole background of what the world was like before the bombs dropped. We're talking about atomic, ato- atomic era future. Um, you know, flying cars, you know, everything that everyone was talking about in 1939 at the World's Fair in Queens, New York. Like, right. this was the world that was made. Okay. 
and this and this is the setting. It's nineteen fifty. It's it's in the nineteen fifties. Everyone's happy, you know. Um, this, is based no off, this is based. This is based off of Fallout. Influenced. Yeah. Influenced by Fallout. Okay, okay. Please, please add my Fallout. Well, there is there is a major Fallout influence because in Fallout we never see the world before. The, right. no, we only see what happened after. Maybe little glimpses of the world before, and that's okay. But this show really gives you an idea of like, wow, you know, this this world could have happened if we had um, accepted nuclear power. In, the, in in that time after world after world war ii, world war II. Uh, we've mm-hmm. we've had this conversation before jay you know how nuclear power literally could have changed a lot of things for better or for worse and yeah absolutely and that's you know it the, the, i like that we've made a lot of advances in nuclear technology since the 1950s but a lot of things could be a lot different right now if we had um i guess adopted nuclear power a little bit earlier or like stop yeah, there was a lot. Of re- there was a lot of regulation and deregulation occurring, like in different parts of the world, and and especially here yep. in the United States. And that and that is a long story that we're not going to get into right here. But that's a lot of things could be a little bit different. Let's put it that way. Yep. So so yeah. Yep. And and uh, so how so so yeah. Tell me tell me some of this, like what's the story? So uh, so this is the so so that's the setting. You know, you already got the yeah. setting in your head. Um, so mm-hmm. the story is about traveling salesman okay okay that's that's Which, cute and very nice very 1950s yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. No, and it's funny because you don't hear you don't hear a lot of these stories of mm-hmm. the traveling salesman but this traveling salesman i'm sorry i'm trying not to laugh is selling property on the moon oh okay okay that's okay okay you, 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 you have up, curiosity you know what i mean you got but here's curiosity. the thing we're up to episode three and we don't uh-huh. know if he's telling the truth or not. I like that. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool little side side plot. Yeah. Right? Like I, now, I can dig that. now there I can now dig there that. are things like he goes to a place where these people are set, but they never show these characters traveling to this said place, or you know, or vice versa. So, mm-hmm. are they going to the moon? We 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 don't know. But what we right. do know is that this gentleman uh, is selling property to the moon, and he's getting these people who are older, retiring, down on their luck. You know what what the traveling salesman used to do in the 1950s, uh-huh. and they're asking him, "Well, what about aliens?" And the and he's like, "There are no aliens," you know. Right. So it's a very it's a very naive world. Okay. You know, uh, scamming like, is definitely like the, a theme like- here. Yeah, I was gonna say like maybe they they, they got a, the tech, technology wise they got they went a little too a uh, little too far yeah. a little too fast. Maybe. Now this now this is when it gets deep because now the real story revolves around how this man has been away from his. It revolves around how a woman gets put into a coma by one of the delivery vans, one of the automated delivery vans, which is it, it, hilarious in nature. I'm sorry, it is hilarious how it happens. It, it, the show is meant to to be a comical, and okay. the traveling salesman has been away from his family for eighteen years, and while he's selling That's property, a, a young man shows up, who happens to be the 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 son of the woman who's in the coma, and the son of the traveling salesman. Okay, okay. but the son, but the but the son, the son doesn't know. And the father, the salesman, is just he's going in. Like he's Moving just like cake. and it's it's very cringy to watch, you know? Because like the, the story is awesome and the setting is there, but then you're just like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, and it, it <laughs> so we're three episodes in. Three episodes came out on Friday. Go check mm-hmm. it out if you're interesting. Right now, um, I love the production. I don't want to go ahead of myself because we're only three episodes in and I want to know what the big plot twist is. So right now we're going to give it a nice little average, but thick, seven <laughs> inches, seven out of 10 inches for Hello Tomorrow. Okay. Okay. A little throbby, it's, a little veiny. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's, a, you know, it, it's a great, it's a great concept. It's a great concept. Now, the only other thing that we did this week um, is... We watched Last of Us. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. You know, yeah, and, and it was actually, 
It was actually one of the shorter episodes, which is very interesting to me. Um, they killed. Do you do you guys want to go first, or do you guys want me to? T- I, no, you. I, I got no, you. So, you start us off. You start us off. So when I watch a TV show, or a movie, or play a game, mm-hmm. character development is important, especially mm-hmm. if you have characters who are who look great, great backgrounds, um, who can survive a situation. Okay. And when you kill them off after the second or third time of seeing said characters, it kills it kills the vibe for me. Now, right. it's been, what, tw- 20 years since the apocalypse started? So there's a whole backstory to this that we don't know. Hell, possibly could be a, a spinoff or a whole other show. Sure. But the problem is there was no character development between Perry and Kathleen. Right. And that bothers me. You know, you, you put mm-hmm. these great Great characters who are not even in the game who can you can change it up a little bit, you can have them join you, you can have them as your next enemy for the future, right? You know, but you literally killed off the whole goddamn militia. The whole goddamn militia is gone. There is there is no more of that story right there because they completely killed it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um Production wise, I mean, we we got to see. I don't know the name of that major bloater looking um, Zambi yeah, I, that we got I, yeah, going yeah. on. <laughs> uh, but but you know whatever the yeah. fuck that thing was, that he was incredible. Like real, he looked like a real son of a bitch. Let me tell you, dude. Like, that's the guy. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was that's not. When, yeah, that's when Jay pulls out a fucking chainsaw and just like until until that thing finally mm. fucking kills me. I'm just going to start cutting parts off until that thing kills me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I mean, completely ripped Perry to shreds, by the way. Oh, yeah. Like, just like he grabbed him right by the fucking head and just boom. But I do want to say one of the craziest things that I did notice during the episode was a production thing where during the beginning of the episode where we see Henry and Sam looking at their perspective at Joel and Ellie during the shootout in the in the cross street. I went back to watch to check out that one scene in the episode, and it is identical with perspective. Mm-hmm. So, great, good. great, yeah, great. Props to them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's all. I that's all I got. Still I a mean, great show, but you know, take it, take the take the wheel, guys. I, I definitely agree. We could have got in. You know, we they could have given us a little more Kathleen and Perry. However, I feel like for the progression into this last episode that comes out tonight, it was one of those things where we had to get through Kansas City, get through that area safely, and it just, it needed to be done. Um, now, <clears throat> listen, HBO, if you are if you ever fucking stumble across our fucking show, I will say a spinoff of Kathleen and Perry and then, you know, kind of raising up and become forming the militia and stuff would be fucking amazing. Yeah. Because I would like to see more of those two characters on screen. Absolutely. Um, and I'm not one to typically say, hey, I want a spinoff show. Usually spinoff shows suck ass. Right. But in this case, if it was to focus on those characters, I'm all game. Um, I'd, I'd give it a shot. For sure. Um. Now, that giant motherfucker, out of out of all cinematic Zambies, I'm not sure which I'm more afraid of. That giant motherfucker or or them big motherfuckers with the goddamn axe hammers and fucking Resident Evil. Right, right. Like, like now a, I want to see like a fucking how big, how AI big you think generated is. battle. I want to see an AI generated battle between that big motherfucker and the axe hammer motherfuckers from Resident Evil just dope. to see who potentially would win. What That'd do you think is dope. the girth between the two of them? <laughs> <laughs> Very girthy. Extremely girthy. <laughs> Did you see the side of, of that hole that motherfucker weight. came out of? <laughs> Yo. Between the two of them about that. <laughs> right. Right. Freaking just girthy. Absolutely. I think uh, I think for the, for this episode, and it, it kind of somewhat ties into episode four as well. Um, we knew we knew after episode three. Hey, uh, Max, yeah, welcome. Stop it. What's going on, uh, Max? 
Yeah, we, we, we knew after episode three, there was probably going to be a little bit of a downturn. This, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a quick positive and a quick negative on this. This was probably the first episode that I was kind of wishy-washy on by the end of it, where I was just kind of like, I was like, oh, this isn't quite going where I thought it was going to go. And I'm getting a little curious now because tonight is going to be, in fact, the season finale. So I, I have to I have to backtrack on you guys. I'm just reading now that the season finale is March when? 12th. Oh shit! They're gonna make us fucking wait. Fucking no, I dude. I no, I think we have episodes all the way. Oh, d- see, they said it was only supposed to be six episodes. How many episodes is it, John? Did we fuck? Oh, yeah, have we been like fucking that up. Have we been fucking that up for like weeks? I mean, that makes sense if we did, but you know. <laughs> No, yeah, no, we have episodes all the way up until March 12th, every Sunday. Squillini, you suck. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like, it said it was only supposed to be six episodes initially, so... Yeah, it did say that. What does it say on IMDb? What does it, it say on IMDb right now? How many, like, what is it going to be actually, 10? Is it 10 or fucking 12? Oh, shit, I clicked out. God damn it. Uh, God, give me a second, out. I'm pulling it what up. You suck. Well, wh- while you guys are doing that... So this was one of the first episodes that kind of felt like a downturn to me. And I was kind of like, and maybe, and maybe part of it now that we, now that we're finding out here live on the air, like, like the bunch of jokers that we are, that there is in fact more than six episodes. That was part of my downturn was I thought they were going to try to wrap everything up, literally everything up in one more episode. I was like, how the fuck are they going to do that? This is fucking impossible. Took them to, took them two episodes to get out of fucking Kansas city. You know what I mean? Took took them two episodes to get out of Kansas city. How are you going to wrap everything up? So I guess so that now IMDb, IMDb's updated it to 10 episodes now. 10. Okay. That okay. That that makes more sense now. On a positive, trending positive. Oh no, it's can... nine episodes, and then so far Joe, credited for one episode of a second season. You're you're fired. You're, you're out. You're done. Like you're just I was looking, I was looking at the cast <laughs> list because it doesn't specifically say just in there. And you know right. Pedro Pascal being episodes. one of the top build cast, it showed ten episodes. But then when I clicked on it, it was nine episodes for season one, and already casted and slated yeah. for the first episode of the second season. Sure. Yep. So yeah, on the, uh, so, so yeah. go ahead. Although I'm just saying, uh, uh, right after this, we could go right into the we could go right into sure. the doors. Yeah. Um. So so basically, uh. Trending still continuing to trend positive though. Episodes four and five, I did notice they are getting better with some of their tactical movements. That's what I like. That one that that the first couple episodes where we were noticing some like kind of semi grievous mistakes. Yeah, like they, they're trending better. I'm wa- I'm watching this as a, I'm kind of keeping an eye on it now. And they they f- four was pretty good, and then this episode five, they're they're trending a lot fucking better with some of their movements. They're getting a little bit more careful. You know, they're 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 thinking shit out a little bit. Like even even on the fly. They're, you know, they're thinking it out a little bit better. And that's, I'm liking where they're going with that. So that is a good, in, in, a, in a positive direction. Absolutely. That is, uh, that's, I've been, I've been, I've been really keeping an eye on that one on the last couple episodes and they're doing better. Mm-hmm. So that was freaking, that was it for me. Like this was just, th- again, this was kind of a downturn of an episode, but it is still a fucking phenomenal show. So like, I'm not, yeah. you, you're not oh, hearing yeah. this is me. This is not me talking shit. This is just. I, I, I'm just nitpicking at this point. You know what I mean? So, well, and, oh, yeah. and, and that's, you know, that's where that callback, like you both already said after episode three, we knew, we knew it, it was going to be a downturn for a couple episodes. Um, yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe tonight's episode is going to fucking be good. Just as well, good. We, um, we all, and all, all of us kind of know the story. Well, I mean, of, well, I mean the last step, the, the last episode was damn heart wrenching. Cause the damn kid ended up dying. Well, yeah, and then you got, yeah, and then you got, we we know how this, from the game itself, we know how this story is eventually going to freaking unfold, and like, I'm sure the last couple episodes are going to be tear jerkers and freaking bust out the Kleenex boxes and freaking robble robble, right? So, yep, yep. exactly. So, yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah, that, so, yeah, so. So, yeah, well, you already know what time it is, boys. What time is it, John? It's time for Melon to do what it's supposed to do. Fucking melon. So, oh my god. Show more. <laughs> oh, look at that. It disappeared. Hang on. <laughs> da, 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 there you go. Da, da. All right. Fuck yeah, dude. 
Fuck yeah, bro. It's time. Get that fucking beautiful music for me, John. Well, Pilgrims, it's been another 168. Been one hell of a week. Trail dust is thick. We've been many, many miles. And man, was some of it a blur. Hope you all been well. Why don't you get on up there on that freaking bar stool here next to me? Pour yourself a drink. It's time to go to the roadhouse. All right. Fucking A. Fucking A. So, holy shit. Championship week in Kansas City, including the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Oh, my God. Like, so, and if, if you guys want to chime in kind of over me, like, I know, I, you know, I'm, I'm on the screen right now, but if you, guys, if you guys have anything to say, I'm dying to hear it. My beautiful goddess, Nikki, very, very wonderfully, like, recommended this place that we go uh, for lunch on Valentine's Day. And so we did. And it was a uh, Brazilian style barbecue joint uh, here in here. Yeah. Uh, steakhouse slash barbecue. It's, it's bar barbecue by virtue of freaking being grilled. Okay. It's like sh shit that's cooked on a fucking grill steakhouse, but fucking this is kind of like a, one of the, one of the classy joints. Okay. Right. It's Brazil, Brazilian style steakhouse. Okay. Not cheap. Okay. And I felt like such a son of a bitch dude, because we go in there and we start getting served or whatever. And they, they got these guys, the waiters will like literally come to your table and they're like holding up these fucking like things with like meat on. Them. They just like slice the meat off for you, you know, and you take your little tongs and you like put it on the plate, you know, whatever. And so already, if you guys can imagine, I'm out of fucking place, right? I don't know what the fuck to do here other than fucking eat. Right. So that's kind of what I'm, you know, I'm doing the polite thing and I'm trying to eat. Okay. I asked for a freaking cut. My first cut of, uh, I, I think I asked for a freaking uh, medium. I just wanted to see like how they did it. Like, right down the middle. You know what I mean? Like, let's just, let's do medium first. They gave me a cut of medium. Well, me and Nikki are chatting and I'm chewing and enjoying and, you know, and trying to enjoy it. And like three minutes later, I'm still, I'm still chewing. I'm still chewing it. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. I'm not, I swear to God, I'm not picky. I'm a fucking goddamn grunt. Okay. I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat garbage. That's fucking spoiled fucking two years ago. Okay. But I know what I like when I like it. Right. When I, when I eat steak, okay, there should be zero reason for me to have to put any kind of sauce on it ever, okay? And that's my ideal steak, right? Like the, the meat should just kind of taste good by itself if it's cooked properly, right? There wasn't really a lot of flavor, and it was very, very chewy. Even for a, a medium, medium-cooked steak, it was very chewy. Very, and so I was like, okay, like we're, we're going to keep pushing forward. I'm going to try we're just going to keep trying. Okay. I'm gonna, and the next one came out. I was like, okay, I got to see what, if that was medium, what's well done. Okay. I didn't go, I didn't go more rare. I went the other way. Okay. For reasons. All right. And there are reasons for that. Well, this dude like slices the thing off, take my tongs. Okay. I put this thing in my mouth. The next thing I you know, I'm like chewing on ashes basically. And I'm just like, Oh God, now I'm going to turn into the biggest asshole in the world. Cause I just lost my fucking appetite. Okay. Again, Classy joint, not cheap. Okay, they had a buffet. I tried to I I, I tried I tried to go to the buffet. The buffet had like salami and fucking cheese. I can get at the fucking grocery store. Okay, some fruits and veggies. I was like, I'm trying not to. My goddess Nikki deserves better than me sometimes. Let me tell you guys. Okay, I feel like a fucking asshole, but rich people do have fucking terrible taste. Let me tell you, that place fucking sucks. All right. I'm not going to name it and shame it on here. Okay. Cause I have pride in my city. And I also know that just because I don't like something doesn't mean it's not somebody else's favorite. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to freaking, I'm not going to be a dick about it. I'm not going to name and shame this place, but I don't even want to say how much it fucking was. Dude. It was like, I, I ate fucking functionally nothing. I feel like an asshole. You know, my queen, Banana. my queen. Oh yeah. They had these like car caramelized bananas. And I like, I wasn't even really a big fan of that shit. <laughs> but I tried, I tried, I swallowed it down like a good boy, uh, including tip. It was fucking two and a, two and a half bills, including tip. And I ate fun functionally nothing. And it's, that is one of the first times I've been to a restaurant in a long, long time where like, I, like I lost my appetite. 
And what a hell of a place to lose your appetite than at a place where fucking, you know, you're paying out the fucking ass just for, more for the experience. On the positive side, the experience was fucking very nice. The waiters, were, the waiters and the staff were fucking amazing. They absolutely knew what the fuck, you know, they absolutely knew what the fuck they were talking about, exactly what meats, exactly how they're cooked. You know, for I'm sure for, there's a lot of other people, you know, that might be watching or listening at some point would would love this place okay like that day was not a good day in jay's in, in the land of jay moving forward it was championship week in kansas city so wednesday the day after freaking valentine's day we watched the parade uh at our corner pub that was very wonderful and then my daughters had a had a, a four-day weekend this weekend for president's day so we decided to come down to fucking branson missouri dude Okay, for a little, a little, you know, mini vacay. My parents are here for a little bit, so we're visiting with my parents and my, and you know, my family, and just making making some memories, right? So, for those of you that are not familiar with Branson, Missouri, just think of like it's like Las Vegas rated PG with a lot of Jesus. Okay, that's basically Branson, Missouri, in a nutshell. Okay, you know, uh, the one in the middle, the one with the O, and so the. Uh, <laughs> You want to talk about like I, I love I love Branson and like it's very colorful and brightly and you know brightly lit and stuff. But like when the sun goes down, dude, like it's it's different. It's a small town, like not a lot goes on. Um, me and Nikki have been around the corner uh, to have a couple of drinks uh, in the evening times after uh, after we're settling down. And uh, you know we're it's not busy if that makes sense. We're you know we're kind of used to the hustle and bustle of Kansas City nightlife. You know whenever we go out here it's very slowed down very subdued and a lot of people don't drink so if you can imagine that right so that's kind of where we are but been having a lot of fun with the kids uh we, we've been we've been swimming the last two nights in a row uh yesterday we went to this really cool museum it was called um modern works i think modern works or wait wonder wonder works excuse me thank you thank you wonder works really cool museum you can kind of look it up on your own it's called wonder works in branson missouri but me, me and my, me and my youngest daughter, uh, we got on this ride and this ride is actually like, however fast you want to go, or, you know, you know, it's, it's like one of these rides that kind of swoops, but you can go all the way upside down, but you dictate whether or not that happens. And you pedal like a bike, like it's like, it's got bicycle pedals on it and you dictate whether or not you do it. So Nikki got a really short clip here of me, uh, going upside down with my daughter. So you can see kind of how this ride works. So if you want to hit the, the play button on that, John. Um, the that's not a starting out, and then you uh, pedal and you go backwards. As soon as you start going forward, you pedal. And then you just go upward. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like, yeah, that was good. Like, so we did that, and like, that was kind of fun. And then we got it so. Yeah, but yeah, I guess, I guess John doesn't like uh, uh, upside down stuff, I guess. Well, so, <laughs> so, so me and my daughter got off it, but like, I kind of wasn't done. Cause like, we didn't exactly push the envelope. I wanted to see if I, I wanted to see if I could fucking break this thing. Right. So <laughs> we didn't get video of it, but like, I went back on by myself a little, a little while after that. And I pedaled the whole fucking time. I made it around that thing that you, you have, you have, you have one minute. It's you have 60 seconds. I made it around that fucking thing, like in circles. I, I did 15 circles on that thing in one minute. I made it to fucking 15. Like I was like, I was like, just, I went fucking full moto, just full on, like on blast. Okay. But we had a good time. The, from the outside, this place looks like, a, like it's like a house, like or a museum upside down. Everything is like upside down. And then you walk in and they got all these crazy exhibits, uh, very hands-on, extremely kid-friendly. This place, this is like the place you know, this is the, kind of like the museum for kids. There were there were a couple of exhibits, though, that were really cool for the adults, too. Uh, I got to try to fucking land a, a fucking space shuttle. Okay, and they had different difficulties. But that was like a video game simulator. I got to try to land the space shuttle. Uh, I, it, it took me a few tries, and I, I, did, I did downset the difficulty. I had to go to the easiest setting, and then it took me, it still took me like three tries to fucking land the space shuttle. It's basically just a glider. You don't have a lot of fucking, yeah, so. So, yeah, dude. Oh, crazy! It says I fucking yeah should be doing a Top Gun parody. Like, dude, I dude, I'm a parody of like 
the fucking society we grew up in, dude. Like, I am the living embodiment of, like, an 80s kid, okay? Like, straight up. Like, that's like that. That is my existence, unfortunately. Um, it is really fun when I'm in places like Branson, Missouri, though. Like, you know, when, when me and the kids go swimming and, like, you know, we, we grew up in a time where, you know, it's pretty common to see people with tattoos. But then you see them with their shirts off. And, like, there's a difference between people that's got a cut, you know, like a sleeve, you know, maybe a tattoo on the shoulder, a leg here or there, whatever. Like, freaking, I'm covered. Like, covered, covered. Like, the the, the Yakuza in, ja- in Japan would be really proud of me, right? Like, I'm fucking covered. And it's kind of funny to see, like, when, <laughs> when we're in this, like, little down homey, down to earth, like, Main Street USA fucking city. To kind of get, see, like, the side, the side glances that get fucking tossed my way sometimes, like. When, when the Adams family of Kansas City is fucking in town. <laughs> so, yeah, dude. Top balls. I like that. Top gun porno. I fucking absolutely fucking would fucking dig that shit. That's what I'm saying, dude. Anywho. So, yeah. So, we have one more night here. We're going to go do a couple things today. I think we're going to go to like a, 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 there's a place with like pool, slides, a, a, mini, go, a mini golf course, like, and an arcade. That's probably what we're going to do today. And, uh, you know, me and my, me and my beautiful queen, will probably have another, uh, another, uh, nightcap this evening, uh, before we go to bed and I'll get to have uh, another meal with my parents and, uh, they'll get to spend some time today with their grandkids after we finish the podcast. So yeah, that was, uh, it was a very blurry week, you know, and not because, and not because we were imbibing a lot. It was a blurry week because we won the Super Bowl, and I swear to God, it felt like I woke up and the next day was Thursday and we came here to Branson on Friday. So like all that happened, like just the last 168 has been non-stop Mach 10 balls to the wall fucking no fucking you know no retreat no surrender like we are moving like headlong into like into like the middle part or this uh, excuse me the ending part of february so that was jay's roadhouse for the week i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for freaking joining us thank you for tuning in if you're if you're tuning in uh, after we do after we do this live and uh yeah joe john freaking back to you guys in the studio we're back we're back oh yeah back back in blue falcon studios baby let's go <laughs> that, that would be a good name for our fucking studios dude like a bunch of punk pirate bunch of punk pirate motherfuckers dude like i'm telling you man. <laughs> it, so before we get into uh, so there's no news i'm sorry guys but we're gonna end yeah, the show with some trivia news. we're gonna end the show okay. with the 20 question trivia but real quick um max in the comments had reminded <laughs> us that I am Legend Two has been announced. Okay, but here's here's the thing. All right, what they're doing is that they're going to continue the story from the alternate ending where Robert Neville lives. It's another cash grab. Oh, I'm okay with it. I Give didn't it like. The, I didn't like. I didn't like the first one. They went completely. You like the first one. one? No, because the book, dude, the book, what the story the book, the was book completely is, different. Yeah. We, when we talk about Zambi movies and I always talk about the, the Zambi movie that they never made, which is just one dude wiping out as many as he can oh. find, you know, like or, or or a group of people just wiping. I think out they're va- I body. think they're vampires. I think they're vampires. In, though. in the book, they are in the book. They're vampires. Yeah. And, it is, and it is a blood. It is a bloodborne virus. But yeah, that was that story. And they didn't do it in the fucking Will Smith movie. Like it, the, the whole, that yeah. whole fucking, that whole franchise can eat a fucking dick, dude. Like, just fuck that. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nah, pass. <laughs> fucking pass. Fucking no. Oh, shit. I forgot. We had trailers, too. Fuck the trailers. We're going to do some trivia. Fuck the trailers. We'll, we'll do, <laughs> we'll do tra- you know what? I'll meet with you this week, and I'll get your, your asshole reviews, uh, trailer reaction reviews. That's, All right, that's do- content. That is content. Absolutely. All right, let's see. So, so we're going to do some trivia right now, guys. It's going to be like semi-serious, semi-not serious, uh, okay. easy. They're going to be easy. So, Okay. I'm down. You'll get the gist of it. What was the nickname of the mule that was awarded a Purple Heart during the Korean War? Oh, I know that story. Do not know the name of the mule. I know that story. Yeah. Though. That's, what do we got? yeah, that's a fuck if we know kind of answer. Yeah. What is it, John? That is Private John Hensel. Private John Hensel. That's probably, John why, Hensel. <laughs> that's probably why I didn't remember the. It's not a. It's not a simple animal name. It's got to be fucking like an actual name name, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what is the name of the army's favorite dessert? Would you have known? Would you have known this answer? Being a ninety-two golf, would you have known this answer? No, not at all. 
because I have no clue. So what makes you think a fucking grunt and a goddamn MP are going to know the answer to this question? I didn't know we were allowed to get dessert. I didn't know we were allowed. Well, remember when I said. There's dessert in the army? I didn't know that. I was in for almost 12 years. (laughs) Surprise custard. It all depends on it all depends on uh, what. uh, Well, surprise custard. Yeah. That sounds like, like some remember, type of Marine Corps response, to be honest with you. Remember, it's Thanks supposed to be you know. semi. It's supposed to be semi serious, semi not serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll start I, I, seeing. I, uh, you'll start seeing the pattern. You know, they, really, the Marine Corps I'm would so definitely so say, you know, the I'm Army's well. favorite dessert is a cream pie, but you know, a chocolate oh, cream yeah. pie. But you know, that's just. Are you, are you well, gonna? How you gonna dog on your own freaking branch, bro? Are you gonna dog? Oh well, wait, you're an MP. It, that's right. It, like, in okay. what year? In in what year? Was the Battle of Gettysburg fought? 1865? 1864 or 5? 18... 63, was it? Was it 63? Was it as far back as 63? Oh, my yeah, God, yeah. I would have known, I would have known that about 20 years ago when I was in high school. I would have known that about 20 years ago. Yeah. That movie was fucking cool, too, in the 90s. Gettysburg, that was a good fucking movie. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. Pickett's Charge. Pickett's Charge in that movie, as depicted in that movie, is fucking insane. Like, yeah. Go ahead, John. Next one. What do you call a private who's always running? This is going to be stupid. What? High speed? Jay? I got nothing, dude. What is it? I know it's going to be For- stupid. Forest. God, I fucking hate you, dude. I fucking hate you. The whole yes. point of this is to, is, 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 you know, to piss no, you off. Just, this, no, the problem this is, is by the time he was perfect. always running, he wasn't a private anymore. At that point, he had made E5. I, dude, can true. you imagine being like Forrest Gump fucking got out of the army as a sergeant, dude? I want everybody to just think about that for a second. Like, I got shot not, in not the box. <laughs> not, not, notwithstanding him being a, a Medal of Honor recipient, just Forrest Gump got out of the army. As a sergeant, I just want you guys to know that. All right, like, <laughs> what you got? I got John? shot in the botox. <laughs> uh, next one. Genetic. What was the name of the army general who led the raid on Harper's Ferry in 1859? Was it Grant? I'm just gonna take a stab at it. No clue. Sherman. Jackson. Fuck it. Was it Robert E. Lee? <laughs> John Brown. Oh, come on, dude. God, God, dude. Next one. <laughs> what is the difference between an infantryman and a non combatant? Dying to know. The, the non combatant is less likely to get hit. It's very true. That is extremely yep. true. That's kind of yep. what we sign up for. So, <laughs> yeah. What is the highest ranking enlisted member of the U.S. military? Are, are we talking as it stands or could potentially be reached? Uh, ranking and just ranking enlisted member. Right, oh, rank, right now, currently. Enlisted or, I'm sorry. That would be the say, Sergeant Major. Uh... Sergeant Major of the Army. And then you have like Sergeant. You have the chief, chief, uh, chief master sergeant of the Air Force. Uh, the yeah, it's sergeant whatever Ma- the, the, the equivalent Corps. of sergeant major of the army yeah. is for yeah. all the other branches. So yeah. All right, Enoch. the next one. How do you yeah, get Enoch, a bunch Enoch. of soldiers? How do you get a bunch of soldiers to smile for a photo? This will be good. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know. What do you got, John? I'm wondering where this dad joke's going. Yeah. <laughs> Just say fall out. Or zonk. Or zonk. Zonk. I get or zonk. It. zonk. Oh, this is one of those sounds that keeps going. All right. The next one. Um, la, la, la. In what year did the first Gulf War begin? Uh, late 1990, technically. The Operation, Desert, Operation Desert Shield was in late 1990. The ground war started in January of 1991. Yeah, I remember that right. shit. That's how I fucking know it. <laughs> I was in fourth fucking grade. What do you call a Marine with an IQ of 160? A platoon. <laughs> whole fucking, whole I mean, we've platoon. heard that one a million fucking times. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> you fucked uh, with the wrong Marine! 
Who was the first African American woman to become a general officer in the U.S. military? Shit, I, I read. I also have read her story. Do not remember the name. Yeah, that's a no go for me. Hazel Johnson Brown. Why is her what last is the nickname? Be Brown. Hey, I didn't write this stuff. All right. What is the nickname of the U.S. military's elite special operations unit? Which fucking one? Which fucking one? Come on. There's like six of them. Well, more it, than this that. One only got, I only got one here, all right, guys? I only got one. Nickname nickname or name name? Like, what branch? Yeah. Nickname. Army. Delta? Delta. All right, we're almost done here, guys. We're almost done here. Why don't we? Why don't military planes have rear view mirrors? Oh, here we fucking go. I don't know why. <laughs> because if you're in the rear, if you're in the rear view mirror, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why did? Why did the? Why did the soldier bring a ladder to the war? So he could climb his way out of trouble. I don't know. He wants to climb the ranks. What do you call an okay. army unit that plays video? This one's stupid. The last one. What do you call a soldier who survived the mustard gas and pepper spray? What? A well-seasoned veteran. There you go, Joe. Well played, dude. I gave nice. that one to John like fucking weeks ago. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. That was good, John. I like that. That was kind of fun. That was kind of fun, dude. Right, Granted, more of more. it was fucking jokes than fucking trivia, but you know. That's okay. No, that's okay. Do either of you guys remember the, the name of the only female recipient of the Medal of Honor? Can you get, do you get negative? Uh, a little trip, negative. Like, gay trivia. Doctor Mary Kay Walker. That's a board. Oh question. no, shit! The board, used to be a board question back then. I never got asked it in a board, but I always remembered that because it was she. She is and remains the only female Medal of Honor recipient from the. It is from the Civil War. So yep. Well, yeah. I got one more for you. And this is actual trivia before we get into our final thought, which I believe it's you. I get I got one more. All right. What is the first video game to feature a save system? A save system. Was that um is on was it on Nintendo? Yes, it was. Give me a second. Hold on. You're getting warmer. If it's if it's not it's Final it's Fantasy gotta or Zelda. Be Legend of Zelda. Zelda or Final Fantasy? It's it's funny. It's funny that you said because you said Zelda first. Like Zelda was about to come out first, but yeah, Zelda is the first uh, video game that has featured a save system. Kick ass, dude. <laughs> yeah. So because it yeah, was too you know, big of a game to be able to just sit down in one go and fucking finish, so they yeah. had to figure out a way to implement extra memory on the chipset to be able to store your game progress so you wouldn't lose it and have to start back over yeah interesting technology i'd like i'd love to cover that um but guys join us next week for episode 99 we're gonna be we're gonna be uh fucking farting burping whispering secrets to each other blowing things up i mean you know you heard you, things- you heard what kansas city sounds like when we get down dude it's fucking yeah, like so i mean I'm just going to put it out there right now. We're just going to go ham next week. We're just going to have a good time. So join us next week for episode 99 while we talk about some whatever the fuck we want to and then come into episode 100 with a new background, new ideas, new fuckboy shit, you know, because at Mm -hmm. the end of the day, we are still the fuckboys of podcasting, not you, me, and Lore. Okay? (laughs) Dude, if they think they fuck around, dude, like... (laughs) They're 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 too serious to be fuckboys, dude. Like yeah. that's like, yeah. like <laughs> now, guys. You know you can always find this out on YouTube, Spotify, the Instagram, the Twitter, the fucking the, the yeah. Facebooks, so, everything. Okay, leave a comment, leave a suggestion, write a request, talk shit to us. Uh, we got some. We had a really awesome meeting this week, and we can we will not reveal anything that happened in that meeting, but just know that there's going to be some exciting stuff. Actually, I think the only thing we could oh, yeah. kind of reveal is the is the tournament. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we should. so good. yeah. I mean, so, we can start promoing that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. look, guys. Um, brought brought really, to really us by no. yeah, brought to us by Jay's boy Aguilar. Uh, he okay. 
came hey, up Aggie. with an idea. So Aggie, um, we're going to be, I told him next time I reach out to you, we're going to have a meeting and talk more about this stuff. We'll have a big old, but we're, there is going to be a DD214 game in Call of Duty tournament. Prizes will be available. Um, we're looking at four man teams. Uh, we're going to write the rules and all that stuff for it. Uh, we want to see you guys get crazy. Um, we're looking at anywhere between June and July. Hopefully with an announcement in April, uh, we'll have more of that information for you. So start putting some teams you, together, start practicing, freaking, and then we can actually throw it all together and freaking do it, do it yeah. the right way. The first, you know, measure measure twice, cut once, kind of thing. So yeah, and so yeah. I'm just gonna say, um, it was brought, you know, a conversation that I had with somebody this week because I I didn't want to play in the tournament, I didn't want to do it, but I'm gonna be the first one to say it. Um, I'm gonna be the first entry of this tournament and i will not be hosting or or podcasting for this event because i'm gonna leave the reins to you guys um i'm gonna be a competitor for this event so i would like i think this that might be the freaking straw that broke the camel's back on me possibly like willingly playing that game so yeah i might i would i, might, I, I might would throw say myself into that i mix. would say like, i would say if, if the, we're gonna if do the, this if it's within the community i'm more than willing to freaking do it for the community of course i say i say we do a showrunner fucking team the three of us and we find one other person we could do that we well we, we get ronnie j we, we get there's, ronnie j or chris bodette well and that's we can there's that's what i'm oh. we we already have enough people for a tournament functionally already within the community that's something i think yeah. that part that that's the that's the easiest part the hard part is going to be hurting the fucking cats at the right time in the right place to have a fucking tournament. That's the problem. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's the fucking uh, same same as when we were in the fucking ranks, right, guys? Like that's like <laughs> we're fucking. Yeah, we're hurting cats here. So that's like you know. Oh, well, it is. Well, so guys, guys, stick around for that. We're gonna have some of those uh, some of that information for you soon. But I believe it's your week for the final thought, man. Go ahead and take it. All right, brother. Thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. so. I guess this week, you know, obviously, obviously for me, it's been a a, a week of of some celebration and uh, you know just more of a jovial nature in general. Um, but it's it's easy to lose sight of things, uh, and it's easy to feel good when you're feeling good. It's not so easy to feel bad when you're feeling bad. And I, I want to remind you guys, you know, always that uh, maintain situational awareness on yourselves. Pay attention to trends in your own life, things that you might be doing more often or less often, depending on whatever, so that you can give yourself a better foundation to stand on. It, it's okay to not feel good sometimes. It is okay uh, to feel your feelings. Your feelings are valid, okay? It is not okay to waller, wallow in them and allow yourself to just spiral. You know, in, instead of trying to swim your way out of the, out of the vortex, you, you dive right into the middle of it. You know, don't, you know, do your best not to do that. I know it's easy for us to come on here once a week and and talk about it. It's not always easy when you're in the moment. Okay, that's why things like the National Suicide uh, and Crisis Hotline exist. You can dial 988. You can text star 988. You can call 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK uh, if you need to talk to somebody. You do not have to be uh, wanting to harm yourself or harm others to call this number. Okay, there are licensed behavioral health specialists there waiting to take your call, willing to let you vent it out and just word vomit, scream at the universe, whatever, get it off your chest. Okay. Say it with your chest and get it off your chest so that you can go back to bed so that you can have a good day. Okay. So you can carry on with whatever you're doing in the moment. Okay. There are people uh, that we depend on and there are people that depend on us. Okay. We owe it to each other as a community, as a tribe. Okay. As a fucking family. OK, as a, as all of it, the, 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 the veteran community, the family community, the friend community. All right. The homies community, wherever you're living at, the guy down the fucking street, the neighbor that you fucking barely ever talk to. Everybody's got a story and everybody's going through something. OK, it's not OK to fucking let each other fall. So we're not going to ever fucking do that, are we? No, we are not. Here's what we're going to fucking do. We're going to have a good fucking week ahead. We're going to have a good goddamn day today. All right. Your next formation and hit time is approximately 168 hours, 
from right now. I want to see you guys here next week. All right. Here on this show, we don't ask for five minutes or an hour. We ask for a whole week. I want to see you here next week. Wait a week. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're going through, you wait a week and you come see fucking us. We'll hang out. We'll say hi. All right. We'll fucking drink some beers, smoke some ciggies. All right. And fucking shoot the shit in the fucking in the fucking motor pool. And maybe later tonight we'll have a barracks party. OK, we'll figure it out together Ooh. and we will fucking get through this goddamn together. All right. Gentlemen, it is always a fucking pleasure. Fucking love As you guys. Always. DD 214 Gaming Community, we fucking love you guys, okay? For all of you fucking viewers and listeners around the world, we always fucking love you guys. We see you guys across the pond. We see you guys in the other countries that are watching, okay? Keep listening. Keep tuning in. We're only going up from here because we're already at the fucking bottom, homies. Fucking A. <laughs> best place in the world to be, all right? <laughs> Underdogs for fucking life. <laughs> oh, man. Ladies guys. and gentlemen, thank you so much. See you next yep. week. Have a good week. Have a good week.